The bedrock of value investing is that eventually the market is a weighing machine. What Ben Graham said is, you know, voting machine in the near term, weighing machine in the long term, watch paint dry in the meanwhile. And I don't have a doubt that five years or 10 years from now, it'll get appropriately priced. It's, it just cannot not be appropriately priced. When I read about Buffett, what I realized is that uh, basically the stock market is an auction-driven market. Yes. And an auction-driven market will always overshoot or undershoot. It's just the nature of the beast, you know, because people are, either the animal spirits take over and it goes crazy, or people just hate something. And so very rarely are businesses actually appropriately priced. They usually are all over the place. One, uh, I would say, framework which tells you that is if you own a home and I go to my friendly realtor and say, hey, John, what's my home do? He say, oh, your home's worth 200,000. I say, oh, thank you, John. I, I call him next day. I said, John, what's my home do? He said, uh, 200,000. I call him third day. He said, listen, dummy, it's still 200,000. <laughs> I call him after a month. He'll say, I think it might be 201,000. Okay, he might have moved by 500 bucks or 1,000. If I sampled him for the whole year, every single day, that home value would be between 200,000 and 205,000 for the whole year. If I look at IBM stock mm -hmm. over a 12 month period, its value would be 100 to 200. And if you throw a dart at any company on the New York Stock Exchange and just look at the 52 week range on it, and the reason it's like between 100 and 200, it's not that when it was 100, IBM was doing terribly, right. and it's 200, IBM was doing great. It's it's the sentiment of the Perception auction driven of market. Yep. And so that is why value investing works, is the range of prices that you start seeing. And you know, Buffett uses the used to use the Moody's manual. He used to go through all these companies. And, and in fact, when he was teaching the MBA students who would come to Omaha, he would say, look, I found this company, Western Insurance. You know, it had a market cap of $15 million. And last year they made 25 million. And they have $30 million cash, no debt. Are you going to buy that business? Sure. You know, the numbers make no sense. And so in auction driven markets, you will periodically get weirdness in your favor. And so the idea is that, you know, I don't know if you guys remember that Seinfeld episode when Elaine broke up with her boyfriend, you know, they're on a flight together. They were Puddy, right? And Puddy is just looking at the seat in front of him. And she asks him, uh, what are you thinking? He says, nothing. He says, you're looking at the seat in front. What are you doing? Nothing. So she broke up with him because she couldn't handle the fact that Putty is doing nothing, right? But if you can be like Putty as an investor, yeah. find investor insurance and go back to just looking at the seat in front of you. If you get excited about watching paint dry or watching the back of an airplane seat for long periods of time, this is the business for you. I'm a specific kind of game player. So number one, I prefer individual sport to team sport where I can control outcome. I wouldn't be a guy who would be really excited about a soccer game because you got a team and you got to coordinate all this stuff. I'd be more interested in like tennis, for example, to control going. the outcome. In investing, basically what happens is that you just need two, two skills that are hard for many people. The biggest skill that's really hard for many people is patience, that's extreme true. patience. You need like like putty, you know, if you can just watch the back of that airplane seat and be so happy, you know, that's it. Most people can't do that. That's they right. need activity. They need stuff going on. And the second is that if you figure out the rules, so the rules are very simple. You know, a business is worth the sum of future cash, present value, right? But the thing is, that's kind of complicated for IBM and Microsoft, and Google and all these companies. It's not so easy because they're not so cheap, right? But sometimes you run into businesses where it's super obvious, like this Western insurance like Buffett bought, where you say, okay, now I know this is stupidly priced and I know I can be patient. I'm just gonna buy it, put it in the drawer and uh, go back to looking for more stuff. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos just like this one. To continue learning about investing, watch this video right here.